Hello and welcome to another video in our series on Ephesians. Uh, today we're kicking off the last chapter in this video series, uh, chapter 6. Uh, we'll probably end up doing chapter 6 in two videos. Uh, the reason for that being I want to kind of keep some of the themes separate. The first nine verses are actually tied closer to chapter 5 in their themes as they deal with submission. Uh, and for those of you that may not know, when Paul wrote this letter, uh, he didn't have any verse or chapter markers. Those were added later. He just wrote it as a normal letter. And then many, 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 many years later, someone went in and added verse and chapter markers to kind of make it easier to navigate and locate certain passages. But because of these chapter divisions, uh, it can be kind of easy for us to separate thoughts that wouldn't have been separated in the early church. And I think this is one of those things that would have been best kept in chapter 5. But maybe that's just me. I'm not a technical Bible scholar, so I'll leave that decision to someone else. So we're going to do this first video on chapter 6, covering the first nine verses, and then we'll do a final video on Ephesians where we kind of wrap up the last passages, covering the armor of God and spiritual warfare and all that. So let's just jump into the first four verses dealing with submission and obedience regarding children in the family unit. Uh, so we'll start at verse 1. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother. This is the first commandment with a promise, that it may go well with you and that you may live long in the land. Fathers, do not provoke your children to anger, but bring them up in the discipline and instruction of the Lord. I think these are verses that most Christians are familiar with. I'm sure a lot of parents make sure their kids know these verses. These are the first memory verses that you would learn. <laughs> uh, and just like in the last video where we covered the roles that Paul outlined for the wife and the husband, we should pay careful attention to the roles that Paul continues to lay out in the family unit, this time for children. And we shouldn't just gloss over the fact that Paul is directly addressing children. Again, like we saw in the previous video, if Paul was just encouraging the status quo for keeping the same cultural norms, he would address the men and tell them to dominate their household. Tell the men that the children should obey. But Paul doesn't do that. He addresses children directly. Obey your parents in the Lord, meaning in a Christian family, under Christian leadership, obey your parents. Don't follow them into sin, just like the wife shouldn't follow her husband into sin. But if your parents are in the Lord, and they're leading you in the Lord, obey them. Paul invokes the fifth commandment about honoring the father and mother as support for this directive. This is big. We shouldn't just gloss over this. This is part of the Old Testament law. This shows that there are parts of the Old Testament law that still apply to Christians. It shows that the moral law still applies. Obey your parents, do not murder, have no idols, so on and so forth. And the ceremonial laws are not really applicable, like sacrifice, avoiding certain foods, so on and so forth. That's a topic for another video. Uh, and then Paul gives directive to fathers. Again, just like in the last video, it's the husband and the father that, leads, that needs that little extra nudge and reminder. Fathers... Do not provoke your children to anger, but bring them up in the discipline and instruction of the Lord. Now, why does Paul only address fathers here? Uh, because at the end of the day, they are the head of the household, just like Christ is the head of the church. They are accountable. So Paul emphasizes that and gives caution. Do not provoke your children to anger. The word here means to intentionally make angry. So fathers, do not intentionally make your children angry. Don't just set up rules and regulations for the purpose of irritating your kids. But on the other hand, do be intentional about instructing your children in the Lord. The words used here refer to discipline and correction. So this would imply that fathers will be correcting their children, and that will probably make them angry. But the fathers shouldn't be doing this for the purpose of making their kids mad, but for the purpose of instructing them in the Lord. Uh, next, we're going to read verses nine, uh, 5 through 9. Uh, referring to bond servants, so starting at verse 5. Bond servants, obey your earthly masters with fear and trembling, with a sincere heart, as you would Christ, not by the way of eye service as people pleasers, but as bond servants of Christ, doing the will of God from the heart, rendering service with a good will as to the Lord and not to man, knowing that whatever good anyone does, this he will receive back from the Lord, whether he is a bond servant or is free. Masters, do the same, and stop your threatening, knowing that he who is both their master and yours is in heaven, and there is no partiality with him. So here, Paul is referring to slaves. The word bondservant is a way that we in the English language have tried to bring clarification to the word slave in the Greek. The word here in the Greek is doulos, and it means slave. But when we think slave, we think of slavery in the South, of kidnapping people, selling them into horrible working conditions. Uh, and that happened in the ancient world for sure. 
But that's not what slave meant in their culture. That's not what Paul... Paul is not endorsing slavery. That's also another video for another time. Uh, a slave in this culture was basically an employee. Which is why some modern translations use the word bondservant. You might become a bond servant because you have a debt to pay, because you're apprenticing, because this is some sort of agreement that you've made, or because of a contract that you signed to complete a certain amount of work for a certain person. It, that's what bond servant means. But what Paul is referring to is essentially people who work for someone else. He says, obey your earthly masters, so your boss, <laughs> here on earth with fear and trembling. This is the same type of description that we saw in chapter 5 when we talked about reverence for Christ. The word reverence and fear are one and the same in the Greek. It's phobos. So that same type of fear that you have for Christ, you should emulate with your boss. Serve them with a sincere heart as you would Christ. Serve them in this way, not because you want to impress them or impress the people around you, but because you are ultimately bond servants or slaves of Christ. So in our work, we submit to authority and serve selflessly, not because we want to get promoted or because we want a fancy title or whatever earthly good may come from that. We do those things well because we're serving God. And the reward of serving God is far better than any earthly reward we could get. And that's what Paul is getting at in verse 8. Knowing that whatever good anyone does, this he will receive back from the Lord. We don't serve earthly masters because we want to get rich. And we don't serve God because we want to get rich. We submit to and revere God because of what he's already done for us. And our reward in him is far greater than any material promise that we could be given on earth. And Paul puts a clarifier on the end of the statement too. He says, whether he is a bondservant or is free... He's referring to our earthly employment, whether we're indebted and required to work or we're in a place where we're free, meaning there's no contract or debt or anything like that. It doesn't matter your status. Serve God. And this feeds directly into Paul's point in verse 9. He tells us, the masters, the bosses, to not threaten their servants because God is the master of both of them and there's no partiality in him. So the call is given to employers as well. Treat your people well. Don't threaten them because they are also a child of God. And it doesn't buy you more points in heaven if you employ a thousand people or 50 people or if you work for someone else. That's what Paul means here, that there's no partiality in him. It means that God is not going to favor one over the other. He's not going to favor the boss over the slave or the slave over the boss. They are both equally loved. And that should greatly impact how we view one another in our workplaces, in our families, and in our church. All right, this video was short and sweet, uh, I, but I just wanted to make sure we address these passages separately uh, so they can kind of be lumped into the themes of submission in, in chapter five rather than kind of shoehorn them into the next video on spiritual warfare. So thank you very much for tuning in. Uh, as always, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, thoughts, ideas, uh, disagreements, agreements, I would love to hear them from you. Uh, so feel free to reach out and continue the discussion. But as always, thank you for watching this video. May God bless you and I'll see you soon.